Hey everyone, Ricardo here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the trip time for SEL and IEEE inverse time over current protection curves. Now just real quick before we get started, make sure to download our protection and control fundamentals PDF. It's a 28 page PDF where we go over all the basics of power system protection and control. So make sure to check it out, the link is in the description below. All right, so let's jump right into it. Let's see how we can calculate the trip time of SEL and IEEE inverse time over current curves. All right, so let's first talk about exactly what we're trying to achieve. Now, every inverse time over current tripping curve for a specific device has a particular shape. There are generally three settings that define the trip characteristic of the overcurrent curve, and those are the curve type, the time dial, and the pickup. Now, for this example, I'm going to be using the SEL421 instruction manual to show you the SEL curves. So if we go over here to page 272, and what I have over here is the overcurrent curve for an SEL U1 curve. This is also called the modularly inverse curve. And here on the plot, we have the curves for different time dials. Essentially, what we're trying to do here is to hand calculate what the trip time of an inverse time overcurrent element will be given a specific curve type, time dial, and pickup for a given fault current, that is. So say, for example, that we have an SEL U1 curve again, which is the one that I have over here on the screen. And let's say that it has a pickup of 2000 amps and a time dial of two. And the fault current that that relay is seeing is 6000 amps. Now from this plot, and let me actually zoom in a little bit over here. In this plot, we would first need to take a look at the curve that says 2.0. So this curve over here, which again has the 2.0 time dial. Again, these are all of the U1 SEL curves with different time dials. And for our example, we're going to say that we have a time dial of two for our curve. Now we would then find the point of the curve that equates to a multiples of pickup of three. So here on the X axis, you have multiples of pickup. Basically what this means is what's the fault current level in relationship to your pickup. So if we have a pickup of 2000 amps and a fault current of 6000 amps, then our multiples of pickup would be three. Now from here, we can trace that on the plot. So if we see the three over here and we follow this up to this point over here, we can see that the curve that has a time dial of two, the trip time for that would be somewhere around here. So again, let me zoom in a little bit over here. And what we're doing is we're tracing this curve and finding the point at which the multiples of pickup is three and then seeing what the trip time in seconds is over here on the y-axis. So for a curve with a time dial of two, a U1 curve that is, that has a pickup of 2000 amps and it sees a fault current of 6000 amps, the trip time will be approximately one second. Now the problem here is that the curves that I have over here on the screen are for specific time dials. We can see that we have, for example, 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 15. But what if our time dial was 2.5, for example? There's no curve here that gives you the trip time for that curve. Now you could of course try to get an estimate by drawing the curve between time dials two and three. So you could draw a curve somewhere around here and you can say, well, that's gonna be a time dial of 2.5. But this would just be an estimate, of course. The other issue that we have over here is that there's only so much precision that you can get from this plot. For example, what if your multiples of pickup is 2.5 and not three or two? Again, the multiples of pickup over here are on the x-axis, which have different points. So this one over here is two, this one over here is three, this one over here is four, and so on and so forth. But what if your pickup is 2.5? So somewhere in between the two and three. Now this is a log-log curve. So it's logarithmic on both the x-axis and the y-axis. So you can't just take the midpoint between two and three and call that 2.5, because again, this is a log scale. So there's only so much precision that you can get from just looking at this curve. Of course, it would be somewhat close, but you wouldn't get an exact trip time by just looking at this curve. Now to make this easier though, SEL manuals and most other relay manuals give you the equations that give you the exact trip time. So if we go over here to page 271, and if I scroll over here to the U curves, you can see the equations over here that tell you the trip times for all the different U curves. That's this column over here. Now with these equations, you can calculate exactly what the trip time would be for a specific fault current, 
a specific pickup and a specific time dial. Now you will likely have to do this from time to time when developing settings or when analyzing trip events. So it's always helpful to know how to do this which is what I'm gonna show you in this video. Now, for this example, I'm gonna be using this equation over here for an SEL U3 curve. So let's jump into the Blackboard now. And in here, basically, I wanna show you one example. So let's say that you have a relay that has a 51P element. So let me actually draw it over here. We have our 51P element, and the settings are U3 curve. 1000 amps for the pickup and a time dial of 3.2. So time dial 3.2. Let me actually make this pen a little bit less thick. All right, so let's say that again, we have a relay with these settings and let's say that this relay sees a fault of 25. So let me actually call it over here. I fault, so default current. Let's say for example that it is 2580 amps. So 2580 amps. Let's calculate the trip time for this fault given these settings. So we can just simply plug in the equation that we saw in the instruction manual. We can say that the trip time, so T sub P, is equal to the time dial times 0 0.0963 plus 3.88 divided by m squared minus one. And again, this is the equation straight from the instruction manual. Now, m here, again, is your multiples of pickup. So basically what this means is the fault current divided by your pickup, which in our case is 1000. So of course, for this example then, if we divide this number over here, I fault by this number, which is our pickup, that gives us a multiples of pickup of 2.58. So now we can simply plug into this equation. So we can say that our trip time is gonna be equal to our time dial, so 3.2 times 0 0.0963 plus 3.88 divided by 2.58 squared minus one. All of this gives us 2.58 zero three seconds. So again, knowing the equations from the instruction manual, you can calculate the exact trip time without having to look at the curve, which again, you can get an estimate from that curve, but it's not gonna be an exact time. By using the equations, you can get the exact time at which the relay is going to trip. In this case, for this example, again, with a U3 curve, a pickup of 1000 amps, a time dial of 3.2, if the fault current is 2580 amps, then the trip time would be 2.503 seconds. So you can get exactly the trip time by using the equation. And of course, you can do this for all the other curves on the instruction manual. And again, if you go to the instruction manual, you have over here the curves for all the other SELU curves and also the C curves. So any curve for an inverse time over current element in this relay, you'll have the equation for that in the instruction manual. So you can just plug in the numbers and get your exact trip time for all different curve types, time dials, pickups, etc. Now, one more thing that I wanted to show you here is what if you have another relay that is not an SEL relay? Now, luckily, IEEE actually has a standard for defining the trip characteristic, which is this one that I have over here, which is IEEE standard C37.112. And the version that I have over here is the 1996 version. But basically in here, we have the same thing. So we have equations that tell us the trip time similar to what we just saw in the SEL instruction manual. And that's actually on page nine. So let's go to that page. We go to page nine and it's this equation that I have over here. So you can see here that this equation is kind of similar to the ones that we saw before. We have basically a constant plus another constant divided by the multiples of pickup to the power of two for some of these equations and to the power of 0.02 for some of the other equations like the U1 and the U5 and then minus one. That's similar to what we have over here on this equation over here. And again, this is for the IEEE standards. Now they don't show you this being multiplied times the time dial. Now they don't show you that because you can simply just multiply this equation by a time dial. And essentially that would scale constants A and B proportionally. And they actually mentioned that down over here where it says the time dial, the time dial of an overcurrent relay is a control that permits the characteristic of the relay to be adjusted. 
in the characteristic equations one and two, the constants A and B and TR are varied proportionally with the time dial. So basically what they're saying here is just take this equation and if you have a time dial, and let me actually zoom in a little bit more, and if you have a time dial, basically just multiply this equation times the time dial. So you would have all of this times time dial, which again is very similar to what we have over here on the SEL curves. Now they just give you this constants, A and B and P, but then they also give you a table that tell you what those constants would be for the different curve shapes. So for example, for the moderately inverse curve, which is sort of similar to the U1 curve in the SEL relays, you have A is equal to 0.0515, B is equal to 0.1140, and P is equal to 0.02. So basically what you would do is you would take these constants, plug them into this equation over here, multiply this times the time dial, and that gives you an equation that is very similar to what we saw here on the SEL relay. So it's basically the same process. I'm not gonna show you that again, but again, you can go to this table over here, get your constants for the specific curve that you're using, whether that's moderately inverse, very inverse, or extremely inverse, plug that in over here, multiply that times the time dial, and that's gonna give you the trip time for an IEEE standard curve, which a lot of relay manufacturers use. One of such relays, for example, is the GEL90 transmission line protection relay. All right, so now that I show you how to do this by hand, I also want to show you this spreadsheet that I created which is gonna be available for download. You can download it using the link in the description below. But basically I created a spreadsheet that calculates the trip time for the different types of curves. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So it's this spreadsheet that I have over here. And basically what I did here is I calculated the trip times for each of the SEL or the IEEE curves based on the equations that I just show you. And then I plotted those over here. So you can use this spreadsheet if you want to plot your inverse time over current curves or just simply to see what the trip time would be for different current levels. So for example, let's say that you have a relay with the following settings. So let's say you have a U3 curve, SEL U3 curve, a pickup of let's say 3000 amps, and a time dial of one. You can see over here on the right how this curve adjusted based on those values. And if you wanted to see what the trip time would be for this curve at a fault current of 6000 amps, let's say, you can go here to tab number two. And again, we plug that in here for curve number one. So we would look at the values for curve number one over here. And we can see over here, well, for a fault current of 6,000 amps, the trip time would be 1.39 seconds, for example. And again, that's using these settings over here. If you change this pickup to 4,000 amps, that's gonna adjust the curve over here on the right. And now your trip times also get adjusted over here and you have different current levels. So this would be, if you have a fault current of 4,080 amps, this would be your trip time. If you have a fault current of 8,000 amps, this would be your trip time, and so on and so forth. Basically, once you change the settings here, that adjusts the plot, and it also gives you different trip times at different current levels based on that pickup. So it'll go from anywhere from 1.02 times your pickup all the way up to 20 times your pickup. So that way you can see specific trip times for specific settings and you have several current levels that you can check over here and again of course if you have a point that's somewhere in between the values that i have over here so for example if you had these settings and you want to see the trip time for fall current of 4300 amps then you can just simply use the equation that i showed you from the instruction manual now again i'm going to make this spreadsheet available for download you can download it using the link in the description below all right, so that's how you calculate the trip time of SEL and IEEE over current curves. If you want to learn more about power system protection and control, make sure to check out our online courses where we go over different types of protection schemes in a lot of detail. And as always, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos about power engineering and power system protection and control. And we'll see you in the next one.